Hello, everyone. My name is Haidira Del Rivero. I am a medical oncologist at the National Cancer Institute in the National Institute of Health. Today, I'm going to discuss briefly with you a study that just recently opened. I'm, I'm very excited about this study, which is a first in human phase one study of an antibody drug conjugated called ADCT701 in patients with neuroendocrine tumors and neuroendocrine carcinomas. But first, antibody drug conjugated, I'm sure for many of you is a new terminology. Let's just define what is an antibody drug conjugated. It's also called ADC. It's a highly targeted biopharmaceutical drugs that combine a monoclonal antibody specific to a surface antigen present on particular tumor cells with highly potent anti-cancer agents, which is linked to a chemical linker. So let's just describe what is an ADC. So this is a picture. So this is a monoclonal antibody. So a monoclonal antibodies are proteins that are made in the lab that act like proteins called antibodies in our bodies. These antibodies are part of your immune system and they seek out antigens, meaning foreign materials, in this case, cancer cells, in order to destroy them. So as we can see, this is a monoclonal antibodies and this monoclonal antibody is going to bind to a specific antigen in the surface of the cancer cells. But this monoclonal antibody, in order to be called antibody drug conjugated, they have a linker. So a linker is a, a binding between a, the antibody and the cytotoxic drug. And then also it has a payload. And this payload is a drug that we use to fight cancer cells. So it is, as we can see, the ADC has three different parts of the antibody drug conjugated. And just to summarize, this antibody drug conjugated is a monoclonal antibody that's going to bind to a specific protein or antigen in the surface of the cancer cells. But in order to kill the cancer cells, it needs to have a linker with a payload, and that payload is a chemotherapy. So all together is going to then kill the cancer cells. Okay, now to which antigen does the antibody drug conjugated bind? And it binds to DLK1. DLK1 stands for delta like non canonical notch ligand like, 1. I know this is a very long name, but what we need to learn is that DLK1 is expressed in neuroendocrine cancers, neuroblastoma, adrenocortical carcinoma, and other cancers. DLK1 is mostly restricted in neuroendocrine tissues. DLK1 is expressed in many human tissues during embryonic development, but in adults, expression is low and is mostly restricted to neuroendocrine tissues. More recently, high levels of DLK1 expression have been identified in neuroendocrine and endocrine-related cancers. Recent studies have also shown that DLK1 expression is associated also with worse prognosis. And what we are learning as well is that DLK1 may be important in driving resistance to chemotherapies, as well as potentiated malignancy in the cancers. As we can see here, this is a small cartoon where we can see the DLK1 expressions in the, is, is in the surface of the cell. And as we discussed earlier, DLK1 has higher affinity for neuroendocrine uh, cells. DLK1 has been known to express in different neuroendocrine tumors, and this is just mentioned the expression of DLK1 not only on the GI neuroendocrine tumors, but as, as well as pancreas, neuroendocrine tumors, neuroblastoma. Neuroblastoma is another type of rare neuroendocrine tumors, very similar to pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas, but neuroblastoma is mainly seen in pediatric patients. We also see a high expressions in adrenal cortical carcinoma, as well as in pheochromocytomas and paragangliomas. So as we can see here, studies have shown that the expression of DLK1 is highly seen in patients with neuroendocrine tumors or neuroendocrine tumor tissues. Moreover, what we did here in the lab, uh, here at the National Cancer Institute, working together with other investigators here, is that we wanted to understand what is the activity of ADCT 
701, which is the name of the drug, which is an ADC that targets DLK1. Um, as we can see here in the lab and studies and using different cell lines and the way to study what is the efficacy of certain drugs, we do it in the lab and we do it by using different cell lines. Even though in neuroendocrine tumors, there is not that many cell lines, as well as other cancers like pheochromocytomas and paragon gliomas and adrenocortical carcinoma, we were able to select different cell lines and also be able to determine what is the efficacy of ADCT701 in these different cell lines. And as we can see here, this is just to show you is that these are the cell lines and these are the tumor volume that was seen from the different uh, cell lines. And as we can see here by using ADCT701, we can see that there is, it destroyed the cells from growing, as we can see here compared to the clinical models that did not receive the drug. Moreover, this is another study that was done by a collaborator from the Children's Hospital where in, in which his area of expertise is neuroblastoma. And neuroblastoma, like I said earlier, is another type of neuroendocrine tumor that's mainly seen in kids. And he also demonstrated that ADCT701 also have killing activity in different models of neuroblastoma. And we can see here that the effect of ADCT is seen in green. By looking at the green, we can see that there was no growth of tumors by using this agent. Because of that and what we learned, we then worked on developing a clinical trial, which is ADCT701 in patients with neuroendocrine tumors and neuroendocrine carcinomas. So just to summarize a little bit on what we discussed, we discussed earlier what is an ADC, which is an antibody drug conjugated. We said that ADC it requires three different parts. It requires a monoclonal antibodies that will target a specific protein within the surface of the cancer cell. But in order for the, that monoclonal antibody to be effective, it needs to have another part in order to have effective killing activity in the cancer cells. Now, we also learned that neuroendocrine tumors have expressions of the LK1. So when you in fetal development, Everyone in fetal development has this expression of DLK1, but in adults, it's only restricted to neuroendocrine uh, tissues. And it makes sense that these neuroendocrine tissues, they can also become malignant. And that's one of the um, hypotheses that we have known about this DLK1. And now we have that we work with a company that had developed an ADC that targets DLK1. This is a first in human study. So because if it's a first in human, the first thing that we need to understand is what is the safety of the drug. And ADCT701 will include patients that have neuroendocrine tumors as well as neuroendocrine carcinomas, the small cell lung cancer, neuroblastomas, pheochromocytomas, and paragangliomas, as well as an adrenal cancer. Because it's first in humans that we need to understand the safety and what is the best dose for patients is going to be the dose escalation study. Meaning that patients were going to receive low dose and then increase the dose until we know what is the best dose or the maximum tolerated dose of this agent. What we wanted to learn from this study, and that's what we call the primary outcome. The primary outcome is the main question that we want to answer by doing this study is to determine what is the maximum dose in patients with neuroendocrine tumors as well as neuroendocrine carcinomas. Patients eligible is patients older than 18 years old that has tumor that we can measure in the skins. And also we discuss about what tumor types we're going to include in this study, which are neuroendocrine tumors, neuroendocrine carcinomas, a small cell lung cancer, neuroblastomas, pheochromocytomas, and paragangliomas, as well as an adrenal cancer. Uh, other questions that we want to answer with this study is to also understand uh, what is the efficacy within the tumor and thus our secondary endpoint. Secondary endpoint is other questions that we want to answer with the same study. So besides understanding what is the safety and tolerability of ADCT701, we also wanted to understand what is the efficacy of this uh, agent in the tumor. So we wanted to understand what if this agent can also shrink tumors. 
We also would like to understand and answer the question to if this agent can have disease control and disease stabilization. And if we see a response in the tumor, we also wanted to understand how long is the uh, response and the disease control in the tumor. Monoclonal antibodies also considered a type of immunotherapy. And because of that, we also wanted to understand what is the immune profile of ADCT701 in the tumor as well. Clinical trials at the NCI uh, at the clinical center, so patients can contact us directly. So you have my contact information here. My and my direct phone number, if you have any questions about the study. Uh, we, you can also call directly the uh, Center for Cancer Research Referral Coordinator, and the number is here. You can be part of the study. First, we need to know that you have the diagnosis of the tumors that we discussed earlier. And also, one th important thing about the studies at the NCI is that once enrolled in the clinical trial, care at the clinical center is free. Uh, this is more information about the study. This is information from the clinicaltrials.gov, which is an information where they can provide a number for you to look or Google about that. But there is more information about this study as well on that website. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention. This is my contact information and my direct information, so that way you can contact me directly with any questions. Thank you for your attention.